if why share the gospel if you have your copies of the gospel available we're actually going to go just outside the gospel acts chapter 1 verse 8 i bet my bible theologians in here could easily rattle this off the top of their heads but we're going to go there and we're going to read it and look at it put our eyes on it acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Then we look at Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Does anybody, can anybody just from the, from the field quote the, the end of Matthew 28? You know, we, go ahead if you're feeling bold enough. What does that say? Go, go therefore and make disciples. Come on, Delon, you can do it. <laughs> Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is our Lord. So his command should be the way that we act out our lives. He is the commander. We are the actors of his commands. I'm going to give a couple other reasons why, but there doesn't need to be any other reasons why. Like any good parent, why should we do it? Because our Father told us to. I told you so, so go and do it. Um, I want to quickly look at this. Um, in Luke 6, Jesus says just as much. Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. He says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me and hears my word and acts on them. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation of the rock. When the rock came, the river crashed against the house and couldn't shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The river crashed against it and immediately it collapsed and the destruction of that house was great obedience to the gospel that's our house our foundation is the gospel and we build up on it in obedience if we try to go out and do the the thing of the faith without the foundation of the gospel our house will collapse around us why do we need to do it because we call him lord and so we need to do what he says but if we wanted to talk about more reasons the gospel is the foundational solution to every social and personal ailment that you can think of. It's the foundational solution to every problem. God says that he is the great physician, Jehovah Rapha. So how do we gain access to the great physician through his son? How do we convince people that there's a gender binary system in place? That there's two genders, male and female. God created them, male and female. If that's killed, if that's gone, you don't even have that foundation. The gospel tells us how the social structure is created and how to live by it. For parents to love their children, for children to obey their parents, for husbands to love their wives, and wives to respect their husbands. That's the network. That's the system that's in place. If we kill the gospel, we don't have any of that. And we don't have any foundation for any layers that we can think of. Next, it's our response of thanksgiving to what God has done for us. You're redeemed from hell, and you get eternal paradise. Not because of anything that you did, but because God graciously offered it 
and you grasped his hand of salvation. He's transformed you into a new creation. The most natural response, as we understand that, is to go share it with someone else and say, I want you to have that too. I want you to enjoy salvation with me. And it's done with urgency out of love for our neighbor. If we love our neighbor, we'll share the gospel. That's just kind of the way it is. Charles Spurgeon said it really harsh. He had a really harsh quote. And this is in the Everyday Conversations. He said, either every Christian is a missionary or he's an imposter. <gasps> Ooh, you can argue with Spurgeon a little if you want to, but man, that was a, a compelling thought. Why share the gospel? It's necessary, and you can't be scared or ashamed to do it. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of him, which would be ashamed of sharing the gospel, then he will be ashamed of you in the presence of the Father. Anybody want Jesus ashamed of you in God's presence? I don't want that. So, we don't want God ashamed of us. We want to honor our Lord and we want to love our neighbors, so we're going to go and share the gospel.